Welcome everybody to part 24 of the Pokemon Gold walkthrough, and this part is a bit of a doozy for a couple reasons. Starting off, you might know that I'm not going towards the mountain, um, the cave that I was originally going to do. <clears throat> that was because during my test play I had found out that in that cave you needed waterfall in order to explore the whole entire area, and since you don't get that till after your eighth gym badge win, I figured I'd go ahead and save that for another time, which makes sense because some of the Pokemon in there are a little bit overpowered, um, probably would be able to get through it without too much trouble, but at the same time, I figured let's go ahead and save the whole entire cave for later and start our way up to the Lake of Rage right on route number 43, where we have a lot of chaos going on, not going to give away too much because at one point the video is going to give it all for us. But I digress. I try and get Queen Lava as much leveling up as I can in this one because I felt like um, he was a little under leveled as to what I would usually have him at. And so I figured I'd go ahead, get him going with this entire route, let it, let it all be his. You know, other, of course, you know, one of his better moves right now is Rollout because of the amount of damage it does whenever it hits. And this is like the best he gets when using Rollout because every other time, except for one other chance, every other time I try and use it, it doesn't work. You know, I will miss like crazy from a rock type move as expected. Rock type moves have a really lower accuracy compared to other type moves and <clears throat> it just couldn't be helped. Excuse me if my voice is a little bit off today or if I cough a little bit. Here in Wyoming, we've had the shittiest fucking weather you could ever possibly imagine. Really makes me miss California even more, or any other part that I would really like to go back to. And with the constant changing weather, it's been hitting up to 60 degrees and then going all the way down to 20 with snow. We're due to get snow four more days, you know, within this week. It's complete fucking bullshit, but, you know, at this point, everyone that's lived here is pretty much used to it. But it has gotten to me sick wise my throat's kind of a little bit messed up but you know bear bear with me for it okay so as far as stats goes for route number 42 um i'm gonna try and get through some of these quick as possible because there's gonna be one point in the video where i want the video to speak for itself no talking in it so let's go ahead and get these stats out of the way while we're going against the clefairy this is one of the two trainers you can talk to after battling them to get their phone number Pidgeotto and Gold Siver, 25% chance in the morning, 20% in the afternoon, 0% chance at night. Crystal Version, 30% in the morning and afternoon, still 0 at night. Crystal Version still, Raticate, 5% uh, morning and afternoon, and 25% at night. Venonite, Gold and Silver Versions, 5% in the morning, 15% at night, no chance in the afternoon. Crystal Version, 40% chance at night only. Venomoth, Crystal Version only, 5% chance at night only. Farfetch, Crystal Version only, morning, afternoon, both 20%, no chance at night. Centric, 30%, morning, afternoon, no chance at night, again with the Crystal Version. Furret, Crystal Version, 15% chance, morning, afternoon, none at the night. Noctile, uh, Noctowl, Gold and Silver Version, 20% at night. Crystal Version, 30% at night only for both of those. Gold Silver Version for Marie, 10% morning afternoon, 5% at night with a Flaffy, 30% morning, 40% afternoon, and 30% at night time. And a Giraffe Rig, 30% all across the board. When going surfing, Magikarp, 100% in all three of the versions. Why? I really don't know. I guess I just didn't feel like mixing it. Well, I guess I can understand why, because Lake of Rage is known for the Red Gyarados, so because of that, you're going to expecting a lot of Magikarp, so I guess it makes a little bit of sense as that. That's the only kind that you can ever run into when you're surfing. However, its levels are between 15 to 24, so when you get it, you're pretty much good to go on getting yourself a Gyarados. And finally, fishing with the old rod. Poliwag, 15%. Magikarp, 85%. Good rod, Poliwag, 65%. Magikarp, 35%. And Super Rod, Poliwag, 80%. Magikarp, 20%. Headbutt, you all know all about that. Fucking roll out, just fucking me up going against Lickitung, missed it I think it was twice, really can come back and bite you in the ass, and I believe, looking through, yep, this trainer I'm going against with Lickitung is the only other trainer that you can get a cell phone number after you defeat them. Um, <coughs> because I was trying to get Queen Lava so much, 
um, time to level up, I decided to go back and do some healing. On the way back from healing, we had a call from Butt Catch Away, which gives me one of the best, best laughs ever because of the fact that he says that he beat a tough Catapree. Ha ha. <coughs> so anyways, this is where the video is going to be speaking for itself. As you can see, I've run into a giraffe rig. Um, the reason I'm showing it off is because of the fact the Giraffe Rig is going to be the sixth member of my party. He is going to be the psychic type that I go on my way to get. Because once again, within this run, I'm trying to differ it up a little bit in what I capture. I usually have myself a Kadabra, Alkazam, but this time I decided to change things up and go for a Giraffe Rig. And it's really funny because during the test playthrough, I was able to lower him down right here, use a Great Ball, and I caught it immediately on the first try. And this time... I'll just let the video speak for itself. I cannot, t I cannot begin to tell you the amount of frustration that that whole entire sequence put me through. Uh, what you just witnessed was at least about a good five to seven minutes worth of trying to capture this, this fucking thing, and it just, it, it, it was such a, it was such a pain in the ass. I'm telling you, it, it, it uh, why was it, especially during the test playthrough, being able to catch it on my first shot? with just a great ball, and then not even the ultra ball could catch it. I even threw a lure ball and nothing happened, but the amount of freaking frustration that that put me through, oh, I, I just, it, it amazes me so much that it just, a, a simple Pokemon catch could take so fucking long, and it's just, oh my god. So anyways, with that on the side, basically the rest of the video is going against the rest of the trainers that I have to, well, not have to fight, but choose to fight, and then picking up a few extra items, going through the quote-unquote maze in the Lake of Rage, and then, you know, continuing on from there within the next part, because, you know, people... I usually try and keep my videos well within the times of usually between 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Sometimes I go a little bit over depending on the situation. I usually try and make all my videos, especially when it comes to Pokemon event-wise, you know, I don't want to just do a random cut at like every single 10 minutes where it doesn't make sense. I usually try and sequence everything. In this sequence, it was basically trying to capture the Giraffe Rig, take, away, take care of all the trainers in here and go to Lake of Rage even possibly taking care of Lake of Rage, except for the fact that, you know, the constant back traveling, and of course, that whole entire sequence with Giraffe Rig, you know, kind of took up a little bit of time, um, you know, especially if I didn't do the speed up process, but, you know, because of that, threw me back a little bit, and, you know, I'll just continue on Lake of Rage going against the Red and Gyarados within the next part. Anyways, um, there's gonna be, um... A lot of people already know this by going through the quote-unquote maze. The reason I keep using that, obviously, is because of the fact that the maze isn't so much of a maze as much as it is you go to an area, you, and it's either the right way or the wrong way, but if it's the wrong way, there's an item there waiting for you, so it doesn't doesn't really... It, it, it's... I don't know. If you recall, if, or if you're even watching me doing... Um, Bioshock Infinite, and I basically say how with most games, I usually try and go the wrong way first, and then the correct way 
uh, later on because I'm an explorer. I want to find everything there is to find within a game. That's just the way I am. That's why I usually try and 100% certain games other than certain games that I haven't 100% just yet and I don't feel like going out of my way to look up a walkthrough guide in order to find it all. I'd much rather just find it all myself. Um, the thing... Where was... Oh, yeah. I usually try and go the wrong way first in order to get the items. That's kind of where maze kind of deals, especially when it comes to RPGs. Um, can get a little bit frustrating at some points because of the fact that you mainly want to, or I mainly want to go out of my way to find every single item that's within an area before continuing on into, you know, a whole different part of the game. And, you know, with this maze, it's like, it, it kind of rewards you for every single wrong turn you take and doesn't make, you know, doesn't force you to go into a wrong area without giving you some kind of reward for it, I thought, which I think is pretty well done as opposed to other games that if you take a wrong, you take a wrong route, there's really no gain for it except for maybe a little bit of scenery in some newer games and in older games. It's just nothing at all. You know, this one kind of rewards you for it. But nothing irritates me more as a gamer, 100% kind of gamer, than going what I think is the wrong way, finding out it's going the right way, and having to backtrack all the way to find some other areas. You know, Dot Hack was probably one of the worst with this because, you know, before I found out that I could use a certain item to be used on the dungeon itself because I thought it could only be used in the outer world, um, I would always end up going the right way and have to backtrack all the way back to the wrong way and it was such a pain in the ass, you know, and I guess that's kind of what it started, the frustration of certain maze types in RPG games and whatnot. Anyways, we're going against here a fisherman that has um, four Pokemon, two Magikarps, two Gyarados, level 10 on the first two, level 15 on the second two. This is the only other time rollout hits every single time, and it's a uh, good good use for it because of the fact that Gyarados is part um, water and flying, so the flying part of it, you know, very weak to rock. So if you get lucky and hit it, there you go. I am not alone in this. I know there's a lot of other people out there that even still today question the fact that why Gyarados is part. I mean, I guess it makes sense that Gyarados is part flying, but. The thing that we just don't get is why is he not a dragon part? He looks like a dragon. He practically is a dragon. And the fact that they only make him a water flying instead of a dragon flying or even a water dragon type is always kind of confusing. You know, and like I said, I'm not the only one that feels this way. I know quite a number of other people out there that probably feel exactly the same way about Gyarados. Kind of wishing that, you know, he got, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the term got more respect because that doesn't really make any sense, but. And I, I guess that what they were trying to do is not make him overpowered, but then in Generation 2, they go out and make a Kingdra, which is Water Dragon, whose only weakness is uh, another Dragon-type move. And it's like, if you didn't want to be make someone overpowered in the first place, why do that? In fact, if you didn't want to make someone overpowered in the first place, why make Psychics? Why make the fact that special accounts for a special attack and special defense and make, you know, Psychics so overpowered that it, it just it doesn't make any kind of sense? And I guess... I don't know, maybe they didn't want to have too many dragon types out. It, I just, I can't seem to understand why it was that they left him with a water flying when it, obviously a dragon type of it should, should be there, okay? Anyways, to, to conclude this, um, we're going through the maze right now, getting all the items, and at the end of this quote-unquote maze, you'll find a, a little hut that has someone in it that gives you the move Hidden Power. Now, I spent a lot of time after getting Hidden Power walking through the rest of the maze again to have a little bit of chance to try and explain what Hidden Power is. You know, as a kid, I never knew what it, what it was. Some people even today probably don't have a clue what it is, but here's... Hidden Power is probably one of the most complex moves in Pokemon. Now, there's always been jokes around the fact that, you know, when people tell you stop playing the game Pokemon, you know, because it's not educational, you could always backfire by saying, well, guess what? Pokemon is very educational because it's one of the biggest math problem games ever out there, and Hidden Power is definitely one of the biggest uh, uh, mathematical moves in the game because what, what Hidden Power does is it changes its type based on it's based on many it's based on your stats it's based on i think it's also based on your level but i think it's only based on your stats and i'm going to try and give a little bit of a rundown of what exactly it is okay 
The type is basically con uh, is basically considered through the set of IVs that you have. You know, example, hit points of like twenty, uh, like twenty-eight attack, fifteen defense, sixteen speed, seventeen special. You get the idea. And what it does is that the type of it is determined by this equation. It's HP type equals eight times A mod four plus B mod four. I want to see here A mod and B mod. What A mod has to be? Diggity there. I'm um, looking through to it, and I'm trying to get it figure. I mean, even right now, I'm going through trying to get it all figured out. Da 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 da. Okay, so and, okay, so here we go. Here, here's what. Okay, so A mod represents the attack, and B mod represents the defense. Okay, so in a certain type, it would be HP type equals eight times A mod. Let's say the attack is 18, and um, B mod being the attack is 17. You add all that up. So basically, what you get is four times whatever five mod four is plus five mod. Um, I mean, um, A mod four is and B mod four is, which is essentially putting those two together. So. And 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 then and what and what whatever you get out of that whatever it equals to will give you the type. So if it equals zero fighting, one flying, two poison, three ground, four rock, five bug, six ghost, seven steel, eight fire, nine water, uh, ten grass, eleven electric, twelve psychic, thirteen ice, fourteen dragon, and fifteen dark. So basically, by doing this mathematical equation, you can then find out what type of move that um, hidden power is going to be. But then the damage itself, you know, the amount of power it takes on is within the equation of five times v plus two w plus 4x plus 8y um, okay 5 times in parentheses v plus 2w plus 4x plus 8y and parentheses plus z all over 2 plus 31 through the variables of those um, which will basically give you the attack defense speed special stat all included together to give you how much damage it basically does and you know you can be the kind of person that goes out of your way to check out every single one of the stats that's in it um, in order to find out what type of move it is and how much damage it's going to do. Or you can just be like me and not give a fuck and just shoot it out and see what the hell happens because of it. But we are at the end of the video a long ass time ago. I gotta go. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.